Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more of The Long Dark in our Against All Odds series. So we just escaped a wolf that was chasing us all the way through the zone, pretty much. Well, no, no, that's that's a terrible lie. Not all the way through the zone, just most of the way through the zone. <laughs> oh, good. There's some granola. So that's handy. Let's go ahead and eat this. We are getting pretty thirsty. All right, so this is what frostbite risk looks like. Cover up the afflicted area or find someplace warm before frostbite develops. So obviously we're getting frostbite risk because we don't have anything on our head right now. Huge problem that we need to resolve as soon as possible. Um, let me take a second to look around here and see if there's anything that I can use. I don't see anything. I already checked the, uh, the first aid kit. Planks. Okay, I could use the hatchet to break those down, but I don't have a hatchet. I did, however, get the hacksaw, so we are going to be in business um, as far as uh, the forge goes. So I need to make my way to the Riken in Desolation Point as soon as possible. All right, so hopefully the wolf is gone. The wolf is right behind us. I don't know if their stalking behaviors have been upgraded in between patches. Cross your fingers. At least the weather's a little bit better now. We're actually getting a little bit of a sunset, which is nice. Okay, now let's see if there's anything left in the shop here. Again, we're playing on interloper mode, so the prospect of finding things... Pinnacle Peaches, hey! We're going to eat those right now. We've got a can opener. That's 450 calories and some additional help with our thirst. Because peaches sit in water. So that definitely helps a little bit. But yeah, the likelihood that we're going to find anything in here is just painfully low. Wilderness Kitchen. Okay, so that'll help our cooking skill. It's a cooking book. Not quite a cookbook. Or is it? A cookbook, I always imagine, is, has a bunch of recipes in it. Wilderness Kitchen is more like how to cook in the wilderness. So I don't know. Maybe they're one and the same. Is it a cooking book or a cookbook? The world may never know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's uh, let's check the register here. Nothing. All right. Um, that's pretty much it for in here, I think. There's some definitely some dark corners. Wait, plastic container. Haha, <laughs> I knew there'd be something else. All right, now there's a few homes right across the bridge. So that's our next stop. Because we need to find something to put on our head. That's our huge issue right now. That's like our number one priority is finding something that we can put. Hopefully two layers that we can put over our head. That's a bear. That's a bear. Okay. Again, game has a sense of humor. I'm going to go inside. <laughs> I'm not, not even going to turn to see where that bear was. Oh. That's actually the first time I've seen a bear in interloper difficulty mode. Now, bears... I mentioned in the last episode, wolves will bring you to within an inch of your life in interloper. Which means bears will kill you. Period. We got some crackers. Good. I mean, food is nice, but I also need to find... I'm not going to find it in the cabinets. But I also need to find a... Uh, two. Hey, dog food. Okay, so now we've got some food again. We've got over a thousand calories in food we just picked up. Nothing in the microwave. Hard to check those. Nothing over here. Anything in the oven, maybe? That would be kind of, kind of gross, but hey. Nothing in the toaster, nothing here, nothing here. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Dog food, more dog food. Awesome. All right, so we actually have a good amount of food now. Let me go ahead and eat these crackers. Unfortunately, um, the way crackers work, uh, they are... I hate snow if the hypothermia wouldn't kill me. <laughs> the way the crackers work is they, uh, they're very salty. I mean, they're, they're salty in crackers. So, as you would expect, they, uh, they definitely... All right, we have 1,800 calories again. That's awesome. Let's go ahead and drink. As you would expect, they definitely dry you out, and they require you to 
drink to compensate for them. Cabinet door. Nothing. I really need to find a clothing item in here, guys. Just, just one, preferably something for the face. New jeans. Thank you, game. Probably not what I needed. I mean, I'll still see if I can put them on. Hope nobody needs this. Yay! Anymore. Decent wool toque. All right. We're in business. And a ragged dress shirt, so some items we can harvest. Okay, so we did finally find some clothing items. Again, notice that we're finding clothing items in the bedroom, in the cabinets, where you'd expect to find clothing items. This is what they did when they changed the loot tables. Picture a giant spreadsheet with all the possible locations you can find things and all the possible different items that are findable in that location. X axis, Y axis. Okay? And then imagine that they just rearranged all of those boxes and made sure that everything was in its right place. Alright, do I really need to drink? No, I don't need to drink that water I just picked up. Alright, I am, first of all, let's go to our clothing interface. And let us put on a decent wool toque. On top of that, we can wear these new jeans. Nice, so we can actually wear... We, we in fact, can wear um, two pairs of jeans. It reduces our sprint ability but it lets us layer up a little bit, which is nice. And there's nothing else that I can do here. Now, I could wear two dress shirts, but that wouldn't be as good right now. So now what I'm gonna do is let's go to the inventory. Let's go ahead and harvest this so I can get the cloth from it. Hopefully we'll get two pieces of cloth from this, but nope, just one. Okay, and that is that. How are we doing now, clothing-wise? Warmth bonus 14. Windproof 4. Oh, you know, one thing I guess I should mention, I did mention this in episode 1, and I really should have. For those of you who did watch my December update video, um, when they had some stuff in the test branch, I mentioned that they removed windproofness. But you might have kind of caught on when I mentioned in the... The first episode, I didn't say this directly, but in the first episode I mentioned windproofness was a clothing stat. They added it back because there was a lot of people in the community that were like, uh, wait, what? You're going to take that out? Um, because people did actually value a, distinct, a distinction between uh, temperature protection and an ability to protect you from the wind and the cold biting temperature of the wind. All right, we're going to pop our heads in here real quick. This house is under construction, unfortunately, so not really finding a lot in terms of... I really don't want to light this match if I can help it. Not really finding a lot in terms of intact houses with items that can be salvaged. I mean, I, I'm not unhappy with what I found. We, we're off to a decent start for Pleasant Valley anyway, but... So far, luck has been mixed. Now, I guess what I'm going to do... I can't see in here, and I don't want to waste a match, so I'm not going to. Matches are much more useful for lighting fires. Bear appears to be gone. The sun is definitely setting. Right, there's nothing in the car. Yeah, there's definitely no other houses either. Oh, sure, I'm getting cold. All right, so we're gonna head back in here. And we are going to hunker down for the night because we're actually in a pretty good position to do that just making sure I haven't left anything behind here oh wait candy bar hey all right this is why I double check things all right let's go ahead and sleep for six hours 
We are recovering condition now, which is nice. We were down to 66% condition. Hopefully when we wake up, there will not be a storm. We need to get out of Pleasant Valley. We need to just be gone. All right. Um, that was over. <laughs> I couldn't remember what I was going to do for a second. I was like, what tab was I looking for? All right, so we have a storm outside once again. Let me go ahead and eat this. Okay, now I need to pass the time for a bit here, so let's do that for three hours. The storm came in in the middle of the night, so hopefully by morning or mid-morning it will end. I'm going to sleep for as long as I can, but knowing the way this rest system works, it's going to wake me up. Okay, there we go. Beginning of the day, and the storm is gone. That's what I wanted. Oh my goodness, that's a loud siren. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sure it's somewhat immersion-breaking when you can hear a siren in the background of my recording, but such is life. I have a condenser microphone, so every now and then, as much as I try, nothing I can do about that kind of a noise creeping its way in. So let's, uh, let's leave the house and see how the weather really is. We can't hear any wind, which is promising, but it's gonna be really cold. It's the beginning of the day. So this is not ideal as far as situations go. Yeah, negative 19, but we're hungry and we need to get out of here because the weather here is crap. Um, so let's, let's move. I'm not really optimistic about this, but I just, I've got to do it. Hate going up over a blind hill. There's a wolf. Damn. Let me run this way. There's a wolf there. That was a ledge. I'm gonna go up this hill. And the exit is not far. All right, let me stop running for a bit. We're blocked from the wind for the moment, so... I mean, there's not much wind anyway to speak of, but that helps a little bit temperature-wise. All right, that's where we need to be, right there. Just want to make sure there's nothing in between us and where we need to be. There's not. Can I safely make it down here, maybe? I gotta warm up somehow. Yeah, we're going to warm up by getting you the hell out of Pleasant Valley. How about that? At risk for hypothermia. Of course we are. All right. Let's get out of here. Really seemed like a slow sprint there. We're wearing two pairs of jeans, so maybe that's it. Yeah, it really seems like my, my sprint speed is being affected by the fact that I'm wearing two pairs of jeans. It didn't, the stats didn't seem to show me that it would be that severe of a difference, but I mean, you would think it makes sense. I mean, the stats didn't say it, but it does make sense. If you're wearing two pairs of blue jeans, it's not like you're going to have a ton of mobility in your legs. You're not going to feel really limber. So that's nice. But I mean, the, the, the screen didn't, sh didn't tell me that. Nothing wrong with trusting your intuition in a video game, I guess, but I would like to be shown what my mobility is. We'll take a look at that again once I'm inside. Hey, look, sticks. <laughs> Might as well pick up a few sticks while I'm walking by them. Now that I'm in a bit better condition, food-wise and thirst-wise. There's some old man's beard. Let's grab that. If you're a longtime viewer of my channel, or even if you've just seen some of the more, more recent Long Dark content, you know that one thing I talk about a lot is that I've been playing the Long Dark since before a lot of these uh, new things like the ability to pick up sticks, mushrooms, uh, old man's beard, um, since before any of this was a thing. And my gameplay habits have not quite fully adjusted yet. So one thing I really want to do with this series is make an effort to pick up those things when I see them and not walk past them. Um, oh, wow. 
Wow, it's darker in here than it usually is. This is different. Okay, um... Crap. Let's light a match. We're gonna have to use matches to get through these mines. Which means we're gonna run out of matches. But we don't have any choice. We've gotta do it. Well, there is another option, actually. I could light a fire. I could do that at any point here. I've got books, which I could use for that. Yeah, I'll tell you what, let's let's try that approach. Okay, we can't start campfire. Wait! Really? This counts as indoors now. We can't light a fire inside the mine. Well, crap. I've got eight matches, and let's hope they get me out of here. I mean, I know where I'm going. It's just a little dark. Maybe I don't know where I'm going. Crap. Here's a corpse. Ah, eh, there's a torch. The question is, can I light it with what I've got? I don't know if I can, but I'm going to try. Yes, I can. Excellent! Alright, that came at a good time. Now I'm actually going to backtrack a little bit. That came at a great time. The torch lighting effect seems a little bit different. It's very, um... in your face. <laughs> Let's look over there real quick and see if there's anything... Yep, there's definitely some stuff worth going back for. That's why I'm doubling back. I don't want to waste time on this torch, so I'm going to sprint a little bit. Emergency stim, amazing. Oh yeah. This stuff New fleece handy. mittens. Mittens I didn't really need. Now I'm gonna hop down here. And we're gonna get out. Go ahead and pick up some coal while I'm going through here. I don't need every single piece of coal I see because we're still gonna go through another mine on the way to Desolation Point. It's really weird that you can't light a fire in here anymore. I'm not sure I like that. I'm used to being able to light a campfire in here. Simple tools, don't need those. But yeah, so I'll pick up the coal mainly on the way to Desolation Point. But for now, what I want to do is... God, there's a lot of coal in there. Yeah, I'm going to hold off from picking that up. Go ahead and get that sewing kit. For now, what I want to do is just focus on picking up other salvageables. And also, I might even, when I get to Coastal Highway, which is where we're headed now, I may actually, rather than, um, hang on, did I do everything over here? Did I find everything I possibly could have? Nope. I may actually spend some time going through Coastal Highway before I go to Desolation Point, just to make sure I've got good gear, that I have everything I need. I want to get a little bit more ground under my feet. I'm, I need that knife, don't get me wrong, and I need the hatchet. I need to go make that as soon as possible. Because that you can't find them in Interloper Mode. If you missed Episode 1, that's, that's what Interloper Mode is. You can't locate the survival-based items. The rifle isn't in the game, you have to make a bow and arrow. So it's, it's really intense. It's like camping. But, despite that, I do feel like I want to have like a little bit more on me in terms of supplies. Maybe I'll change my mind, but that's just where my current instincts are taking me. I'll take it. Hey, decent work gloves. And a pry bar, perfect. So I'm actually going to double back again. Because there was a locker that I couldn't get into. Cloth. Before I go that direction, let's go back to that locker. Oh, wait, no. Wrong way. Wrong way. Did I just miss the turn? Yes, I did.
Okay. Let's force this thing open, see what we can find. Nothing! Thank you, interloper. I appreciate you so much. Just kidding, I don't. At all. Okay, so I think this particular section here has a couple of different possible dead ends, but in general, we're moving towards the exit, regardless of which way you go. They're not true dead ends in that you can get, you can just walk down a long hallway and find yourself having to turn around. See, the hallway's just joined. That's what I was talking about. And I think we're right around the corner from the exit, so we should see some light. Yep, there it is. And also there's a area here where we could, addi where we could additionally find some helpful items. I need to put this torch away so I can use it. But I just, I, I want to uh, take advantage of having it while I'm here. No, don't. Okay, let's distinguish it. Alright, so it still has some... Um, some possibility for fuel on it. Let's have a look at our food options. We can definitely eat that beef jerky. And yeah, we're going to spend some time in Coastal Highway here. Seeing what other clothing items we can find, seeing what other food items we can scavenge. But then, as soon as possible, we're going to head towards Desolation Point, which we can get to from Coastal Highway. Okay. Here we are. Negative 23 degrees. No threats down that way. No threats down this way. Seems like a storm is coming in right now. Not great timing, so let's go ahead and move quickly. You know where I could go right now? I could go straight to Mystery Lake. I know the way now. After doing the hunted challenge, I know exactly how to kind of navigate these rocks ahead of me, go around them, and then head up that direction towards... Um, towards Mystery Lake if I wanted to go straight there. There's also, of course, the ability to go straight to Mystery Lake from Pleasant Valley, which I obviously did not do, but you can do it. All right, now we're moving at a more, more full sprint speed, so maybe I was just running uphill and that's why the sprint speed seemed super slow. Okay, let's look around here, see what else we can find. I'm gonna try and actually get down to the highway before this storm rolls in, so I'm gonna try and try and keep moving here. Nothing? Nothing. Okay. Yep. Alright, let's, uh... Let's see about going a little bit further down. The weather is awful. Jeez. Insert Christmas lyric here about frightful weather. <laughs> Except there is no fire, delightful or not. And I really don't want to let it snow any more than it's already snowing. Let alone do I want to let it snow after that, or after that. So now we are at the log sort, I believe. That sure looks like a log sort. It actually looks like one of the buildings is burned out here. Okay. Hey, stick. 
Son of a... Oh my god, that scared the living crap out of me. Alright. Well, so much for the log sort. I thought it was a bear at first, too. Oh, it's the worst. We're gonna end two episodes like this in a row. I'm actually gonna go out on the, uh, on the ice here. As a means of not having any weird terrain between me and this wolf. Oh no. God, this sucks. I was just talking about how, in Interloper, the wildlife isn't as common. This is... I'm definitely seeing more wolves. Like, I'm actually, like, I'm shaking a little bit right now. Like, I'm seeing more... Because I know how much damage this wolf can do to me. I am seeing more wolves than I did, I think, in my entire Interloper playthrough, which I did previously, which was, um... It, it wasn't an Against All Odds season. It was just a 15-episode miniseries. But... Oh, crap! I didn't realize I was hitting terrain. I need to go straight there. Oh, did the wolf actually bugger off? Oh, I think the wolf... Oh, okay. Okay, okay. I think the wolf decided to leave me alone. In that case, I'm going to head out to this thing real quick. While we're so close. Let's see if we can find any extra goodies. Yep, there's some cedar firewood. Wow. Holy crap. But yeah, this is this is more in terms of hostile wildlife than I saw in my previous interloper playthrough in 15 episodes. Alright, the weather's pretty terrible. I'm gonna go this direction. And we're gonna go to a very familiar spot. We're against all odds viewers, because I like to hang out here. And we may even end up doing it again. But for now, this is just where fate has driven us. Crappy weather. Feels like negative 16 degrees. Okay, there's our spot. I don't have any sprint ability, so I'm going to walk slowly for a bit here, because... If there's any wildlife, I want to have all of my possible stamina bar that I can muster to get into this house. The wind is blowing in my face. <laughs> you see this? Do you see this? The wind is blowing in my face. Actually seems like the, the frame rate is a little choppy. People were talking about this uh, in the test branch build. And I noticed it, and then it seemed to get better, but now it seems like it's uh, still a little choppy. Maybe it's just my imagination. All right, let's get in here. Oh my god. All right. Yeah, I know. And on that note, I will go ahead and cut this episode here, and the next one we're going to investigate this house, and then uh, maybe look a little bit about around the area and get some additional supplies if we can. Uh, but then after that, it's a matter of heading to Desolation Point as soon as possible so we can forge the tools that we need to survive for the long term. So thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to follow along. I upload new episodes in Against All Odds Season 3 every day at 6 Eastern Time, which is GMT-5 for those of you not in the States. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.